You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 66. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. A few months ago, I noticed I had the tendency to look outside of myself for answers. When my brain came up with a question or if I noticed myself wondering something, I would tell myself I could Google it, or I would think about who would probably be the best teacher to answer, or I would consider which source would be the best place to research. And when I caught myself doing this one morning, it alarmed me a little because this tendency to look outwardly for answers goes directly against one of my chosen beliefs, which is the answers we seek are inside of us. Don't I believe that about myself? So why was I consistently seeking answers outside? Luckily enough, I had a coaching session scheduled for myself that day, so I decided to bring this alarming incident to my coach to explore. See, I did it again, looking for someone else for an answer. But I am so glad that I did, because her job is to show me my thoughts and help me see my own patterns, and she correctly pointed out to me that... I was just in the habit of looking outside of myself for answers, that my immediate response to look outwardly might have just been some default programming or unintentionally conditioned habit, and I could just develop the intentional habit to check in with myself first. So that is something that I've been working on for the past few weeks, and it got me thinking about expertise. What do we mean when we talk about expertise? What makes us consider someone an expert at something? When do you consider yourself an expert? Why wouldn't you consider yourself an expert? This might be one of those areas where we just accept our default thinking without questioning and where we assume that everyone probably just thinks the same way that we do about a topic. But now that I am bringing it to your attention, really think about it for yourself. What are you an expert at? Maybe you have a list of topics that you can just rattle off right now. Maybe you're thinking, huh, nothing. I guess I wouldn't consider myself an expert at anything. So that variety of possible answers makes me ask, who decides on the threshold for expertise? specifically in your mind, and especially for non-regulated subjective things. Of course, regulated expertise is necessary in the world. We want experts in city planning and bridge building and science and medicine and dentistry and all of those things that make our lives really, really comfortable. So today's topic is not a debate on the definition of expertise in those areas. What I want to explore with you today is on the other, more personal, more conversational side, like how we use the words expert and expertise in our daily daily lives about ourselves? When do we think of our talents and abilities as expertise? And when don't we? And how those descriptions help us enjoy our lives and feel worthy and feel that we make a contribution individually? Maybe what I'm asking is, how important is it to designate ourselves as an expert? I conducted a very impromptu, non-scientific survey of just a very small sample size, and I started to see a trend. A common sentiment when I asked about expertise was, what defines an expert? What constitutes an expert? Exactly. Now, 
I can already feel some resistance vibes rising up. A lot of people, maybe even you, might assume that an outside authority needs to confer the designation of expert. People can't just go around and call themselves an expert by their own definition, can they? Doesn't that need to be stated or confirmed by a university or an association or maybe by a journalist or a media source? What if I told you I know an astrology expert? Would you doubt me? Would you doubt my claim of her expertise pending further documentation? Who would need to provide that documentation? Or would you just think, oh, an astrology expert? Cool, she must know a lot about sun and moon signs and planetary alignment and retrogrades and returns. Or what if I told you I know a budgeting expert? Would you demand to see her accounting certificate or her degree in spreadsheets or her exam results in bookkeeping? Again, you might just think a budgeting expert. She must have a lot of experience. Or maybe you would think she has a lot of self-control. I want to make the claim that maybe you are an expert. I bet you are. I think it's highly likely that there are multiple areas in your life in which you are an expert. Why not notice and celebrate your expertise? And then you can keep developing even more, both your current expertise and future expertise. I've started to do this for myself now that it's come to my attention. I made a list of things that I know for sure I am an expert in and things that other people might say that I'm an expert at. And when I recognize that those two lists might actually be different, that is when I first got the clue that we might not all be talking about the same thing when we use the word expert. Is expertise the same as talent or ability? I kind of think it is. I think talent is something that is innate, that's just part of your being, that you maybe inherited, maybe almost like genetics. And I think ability is something that you have an interest in or a reason to do. And unlike innate talent, it's something that you decide to work on and improve and learn about and develop over time. For example, Malcolm Gladwell tells us that it takes 10,000 hours or about 10 years of deliberate practice to become an expert. Another way to think about expertise and ability for our own personal definitions could be when we classify things that we want to be an expert in. When I did my informal poll and asked my friends and family what they were experts in and what they thought I was an expert in, Some of the answers that came back, they bugged me a little. I thought, okay, yeah, I guess I am an expert at that, but I don't care about it. I don't want to be an expert in that area. So realizing that you probably have well over 10 years of experience and practice and far more than 10,000 hours doing lots of things in your life, do you now realize how many things that you are an expert at? Even if you think, well, everyone else is too, or maybe you know you have developed a skill, maybe due to work or a previous hobby, and now you don't value that expertise anymore. The question is, is using the designation of expertise necessary? Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't serve a purpose to use that terminology, But maybe it does. Maybe if you define yourself as an expert, it makes you feel more confident. Maybe if you recognize yourself as an expert and celebrate your own expertise, you feel more willing and responsible to share that expertise with others. Maybe you become more of an example for other people who want to experience that expertise for themselves. I certainly appreciate when someone else who is a subject matter expert weighs in on a conversation or provides additional information for me. How sad it would be if she didn't contribute or speak up because she thought, I'm no expert. For that last example alone, I'm suggesting that you own your expertise so that you can share what you know when someone else wants to hear it. What about if you want to be an expert at something and you're not yet? 
Again, going back to the question of who is determining expertise. But let's just say, really, you are a beginner at it right now. You really honestly are not an expert. It's something that you've just started or you're just learning. You're just trying it out. So how do you become an expert? I think you become an expert with experience, with curiosity, with research, with trial and error, and of course, learning from existing experts. You follow the scientific method on yourself. You take a guess about how you could develop your skill. You try it. You conduct experiments. You observe results. You make adjustments and corrections and analyze your results and your progress. And you keep doing that over and over again. And eventually, if you don't give up and you keep making continuous improvements, you'll no longer be a novice. You'll no longer be a beginner or a person who just is knowledgeable in this area, you will be an expert. So celebrate that. Take credit for it. Some experts probably did get a head start due to an innate talent that I mentioned earlier, but mostly I think it is your own driven decision to learn and study and experiment and try and fail and repeat and rinse and repeat, and then you gain expertise. So how do you gain expertise? You ask yourself how, because you are, in fact, the designator of when you do or don't get to call yourself when you are or are not an expert. Ask yourself, what standard are you using? What level do you want to achieve? How will you know when you have reached that level? And then start taking steps towards it. Allow yourself to learn. Allow yourself to be new at what you will eventually become an expert in. Don't tell yourself that you expect to be an expert when you're new. And don't tell yourself that you'll never be an expert. You allow the process to unfold in front of you. Maybe labeling yourself as an expert doesn't matter to you. Who cares what we call our knowledge and our skill level, right? If you have a talent or some ability, if you're content with it, life is good. And this might be a downside of our brain's ability to determine if someone is an expert or not. What if your brain thinks that expertise is required in order to do something, to put yourself out there, to take yourself up to the next level? And at the same time, what if your brain is telling you, that you are not an expert. I'm calling this resistance. So let's say that you would love to be an expert in wine tasting or digital marketing, or maybe you want to become a creativity expert, or maybe you want expertise in self-esteem or to become an expert journal creator or whatever. Since we're not talking about bridge building and brain surgery here, who will decide on the threshold to call yourself an expert? Who decides when the term expertise can be applied or that expertise hasn't been reached yet? Who designates who can be called a creativity expert? Who decides on when you are a digital marketing expert? I'm pretty sure that definition is made up in your mind, especially for these non-regulated subjective things that we're talking about. Maybe you have a gift that would help other people. Maybe other people are interested in or would benefit from your expertise. Maybe you're holding yourself back from taking things to the next level. Maybe you're not giving yourself credit for your experience and devoted study and all the attention that you have paid. If you are going to let your brain deny you the title of expert, at least use one of the research-backed reasons why you're not an expert. Don't let your brain just deny your expertise out of stinginess or meanness or unconstructive criticism. I am not saying that we should all just call ourselves experts randomly. I'm not suggesting that you wake up tomorrow morning and decide you're an expert at kite design because you watched a kite video last night on YouTube and you thought it would be cool. No, I am not trying to dilute or diminish the meaning 
of expertise. My point is not to insist that you have to be an expert and that everyone's an expert at everything. Of course not. My point is for you to notice if you're not acknowledging your expertise and if you're downplaying it. I hope you check to see if you might be using quote unquote lack of expertise as resistance. It is possible that sometimes we hold ourselves back and keep ourselves small and don't expand ourselves as much as we could because of the lack of the label of expertise. Maybe that label is not required or important for what you're doing, or maybe it doesn't fit yet. You can also call yourself a learner, a hobbyist. You could say that you have knowledge in an area without calling yourself an expert. Just notice if you use one set of standards for other people and a higher set of standards, an unachievable set of standards for yourself. Coming full circle to what prompted this topic, I have been practicing asking myself and trusting my own expertise first when I think of a question. It's caused me to come up with some really interesting and exciting answers and realizations. So I can highly recommend this practice. And at the same time, I still do love checking in with other experts. I still love researching and finding different perspectives and leaning on the benefits of other people's time, experience, and formal study that usually goes into developing expertise. So it's a win-win for me either way. And I am hoping that you are starting to see some benefits for noticing and giving yourself credit for your own expertise as well. Let me know if you have any questions or resistance about this topic. Send me an email at hi at bexby.org or leave me a comment on the show notes at bexby.org slash expert, E-X-P-E-R-T. I cannot wait to hear what you think about all of this. And before we go today, in case you missed it or forgot, I've opened a journal and notebook shop. I am developing expertise in a new area and I am having so much fun. And yes, I am in the middle of the scientific process. I am trying things out learning from my mistakes and repeating the cycle, and I can already see specific examples of ways that I have improved and the things that I have learned. And no, I don't think I am an expert journal creator yet, but I can see that it is a possibility in the future. In April, I am featuring the Dream Interpretation Journal. You can see a video of me explaining it on my Facebook page. Just search for release your resistance when you go to Facebook. Thank you again for listening today. Talk with you next week. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 